I think for Pochettino, it's looking pretty bad. Good afternoon, guys. We're back yet again with another talk about all of the weekend's topics. We have headed into the international break, but that's kind of boring. So let's look back on the weekend's football as loads of you guys are sending your opinions. We're talking Barcelona, Real, Chelsea, Manchester United, Spurs, Bundesliga, loads of stuff coming up. But first off, to the potential sack race between Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Mauricio Pochettino, because one of them, either of them, could be going first. Drav Shenoy said, do you think either Pochettino or Ole Gunnar Solskjaer get the sack soon if they don't turn things around? Oblivion X. Matt, do you think Pochettino should be sacked and why? As a Spurs fan, are you worried about the current form? Yes. Which Spurs fan isn't? Moose Ali also said, is this the end of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I think, although the Spurs and Manchester United are both in poor form at the moment, the managers kind of have a different background. And it leads me to believe that Pochettino won't be the one who's going to be sacked first. I know that Manchester United gave Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a contract far more recently, at the back end of last season. They obviously went through against PSG in the Champions League, which was absolutely brilliant for him. I just think that Pochettino has earned so much more time with Spurs. That and the fact that Daniel Levy is never going to pay out a ridiculous contract for sacking Pochettino. I don't think he's going to resign, and he seems like the kind of guy who probably would stay until the end of the season. Um, I probably, I may end up regretting that if he is sacked in the next few weeks, but I can't see it happening. I think the problem is at Spurs, the players have obviously stopped. They've come to an end of a cycle. It's been seen that the likes of Arsene Wenger and Alex Ferguson, and even Guardiola and Klopp do it as well, they all realise that players and managers have cycles. You have three or four years where you're supposed to win something, where you have that time where everything comes together and then things sort of fall apart and you've got to move players on. The amount of players that Alex Ferguson sold, even when some of them were at their prime, it's because he realised that things had to continue to develop. That hasn't been happening at Spurs. There are so many players who are still there from like five, six years ago. The likes of Christian Eriksen, Vertonghen, uh, Hugo Lloris, Eric Dyer were all signed like five, six, seven years ago. They haven't won anything with Spurs and now they're going a bit stale, unfortunately. Um, I think for Pochettino, it's looking pretty bad. Certainly the most testing time in the Spurs career. Um, as for Manchester United, ah, it's looking even more foolish as well because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was backed in the summer. The board said, you want an 80 million pound centre back, right? He didn't even give it to Mourinho, but they gave it to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They went out and got Maguire. You don't want Lukaku and Sanchez. We'll get rid of them, who are now doing fantastic in Syria. The thing is with Spurs, on the flip side of this, is that Levy didn't back Pochettino. So something to be said there, if he was to leave and then a new manager was to come in and Levy was to back him, which he won't, wouldn't quite make sense. But with Manchester United, they've given Ole Gunnar Solskjaer quite a lot of tools, not all of them, Granted, they haven't given it all of them and he hasn't been able to get rid of absolutely everybody that he would have liked to. But I think they probably would be expecting a lot more at this period. And I think that's why he could be first to go with the two. But it wouldn't surprise me if either one of them went. But moving on from that terrible stuff, add to some bits in La Liga because those you are asking about Barcelona, every time they win, I feel like people just say, oh, it's talent. Like, oh, Messi just turned it around and Suarez just turned it around. I don't want to give any credit to Valverde. I'm going to give him a little bit of credit. He oversaw the 4 0 beating of Sevilla, who up to last weekend were top of the league. So I'm going to give him a little bit of credit. Having said that, Luc Dion should have had a hat trick in the first half. Himesh Mehta said, Is Barcelona going to suffer like United once senior players like Messi, PK, Busquets, and Suarez leave the club? Adi Naik thinks which position is suitable for Griezmann. This is something that I completely, completely agree with. That is the biggest question. How are you going to fit everybody in? They wanted to bring Neymar in as well. How on earth are you going to play Messi, Neymar, Suarez, Dembele and Griezmann in the same team? If you've seen anything from this weekend's football, for me, it's that Luis Suarez has still got it. Luis Suarez is best as a centre forward. And Barcelona and Luis Suarez and even Griezmann play well when there's only one centre forward. Neither of them can do the wing job. They don't have the defensive cover. They don't have almost the patience to be out in the build-up play. They want to be in the box scoring goals. This has been something that... Harsh Rathore is brought up saying should Barca keep Griezmann out since Suarez is performing great and if they do so how will they justify this massive signing and what holds Griezmann in the future? Joshua Lewick as well. Um, actually we'll get onto that in a minute but that's the point. They've signed Griezmann for all this money. It's pretty clear they were going to do it since last summer. So they have to play him now. And the thing is with Suarez still doing well Griezmann is going to be kept on the bench. This is where Valverde needs to actually grow a pair and say, you're playing better, Suarez, you're going to start in the starting lineup. Until you have a dip in form, 
or until Griezmann shows me otherwise, Suarez is going to be the number one striker. It's pointless him trying to shoehorn loads of players in positions that don't fit. We've seen it happen at Barca this year and it has not worked. Of course, it's difficult to justify 120 million when he sat on the bench, but the board knew that before they signed Griezmann. Joshua Luok has said, actually, red cards against Barca, fair or harsh. We don't know what Dembele said, but if he's stupid enough to mouth off to the referee, he's going to get sent off. I don't necessarily agree with it because I know a load of players say a lot of worse things to the ref. Don't even go there in the first place. It was the other end of the field. It was the defender who got sent off for Barcelona. There's no need for Dembele to run like 60 yards just to go and get himself sent off. As for the red card for the defender, very harsh. I know it's last man and I feel like he was gaining on Chicharito, I believe. And he kind of felt the contact was like, I'm not going to make it here. The defender's going to get me. I might as well just fall over and get a red. Yeah, I think that's very, very harsh. Very harsh on Barcelona. We will come back to La Liga in a little bit, though. Um, but now back to the Premier League very quickly, because Christopher Opongadu Badu has said Chelsea are actually a top four side. It's not even a question. It's a statement. But I can get behind it. In recent form with Frank Lampard, I think there's a sort of fearlessness about them. Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount are unbelievable. It's like they've been wound up behind the scenes for ages and now Lampard's just let them loose and they've got no fear. They're playing with so much confidence and they're almost not hurt by recent failings like some of the Manchester United players are and definitely some of the Spurs players. There's, they haven't sort of experienced massive loss like the Champions League final for Spurs, which is huge. So they're almost playing without any fear and they are really, really putting in some unbelievable performances. I still think there might be a bit of a leadership void at Chelsea and when things really get tough, we'll wait and see. But who knows, Patrick the Great has said, following Chelsea's run of good form, do you think they're contenders for silverware? Again, why not? If they haven't been burned before, then they might, you know, they might have the balls to go all the way. A lot of people said the same thing about Ajax last season. De Ligt and De Jong had almost, yes, they lost in the Europa League final to United, but they were continuously sort of learning and developing and they were still young enough to be completely brave and go out there like the rest of the team were. And it was brilliant for them. They so nearly got to a Champions League final. I honestly think Chelsea could be... People say a threat to the top four. They didn't finish third last season. Like they were comfortably inside the top four after, you know, with two or three match days to go. It was kind of Liverpool and City fighting for the title and then... The rest of them desperately trying to finish top four, though it seemed like United, Arsenal and Spurs were losing all the time. But Chelsea were in third, and deservedly so. And I, yeah, I think they could be a top four side this season. As for the weekend, brilliant performance away at Southampton. Get three goals in the first half. I just think they were slick, slick football. Um, next up, onto the Bundesliga. Luisa Halfiger said, is the Bundesliga the most exciting right now with first and seventh so close? Gladbach are on top, of course. Wolfsburg are unbeaten. Freiburg are even up there. Um, Bayern lost at home this weekend and Dortmund dropped points. RK is also message saying that it's pretty damn exciting. Basically, the summary of his long-winded message. And I think it really is. I think the Bundesliga has a slight problem where people may think it's rather one-sided because of the fact that Bayern win all the time. And what this does is actually make the rest of the league look terrible where they're actually on a pretty level playing field. There are some excellent players and excellent teams in the Bundesliga. You only have to see by the fact that Dortmund and Bayern often do a lot of their business within the Bundesliga. And that just shows you that they believe that the rest of the league has got the players which can come in, be good enough to then represent Dortmund and Bayern on the international stage in the Champions League and for the rest of the teams in the Europa League. But Frankfurt got to the semi-finals last year. I think there are some really good teams and it's not, and I say, look, Liga I think is good, but I think the gulf between PSG and the rest of them is much, much bigger than the gulf between Bayern, Dortmund, maybe Leipzig as well, and the rest of the league. I think it's some really, really good teams. It doesn't surprise me that teams are throwing up upsets. And some of the best players in the league aren't even at the top teams. One of the best German youngsters, Luca Waldschmidt, is at Freiburg. Kai Havertz is still at Leverkusen. Julian Brandt was there last season, is now at Dortmund. Some fantastic players, um, the Eggestein brothers, at Werder Bremen as well. There's some really good players in the rest of the league, and I think it's super interesting. And lastly, on to Real Madrid, because there was talk of Zidane being sacked. I hold my hand up, that was me. I thought Zidane was going to be sacked like two, three weeks ago. They were in a right state. I was like, lost to PSG. Cohen has said, do you think Hammers and Hazard will regain form considering their great performance over the weekend? I think they will, and I think Zidane could turn it around. They're top of the league by two points. The international break, one game, one Champions League game after that, then Al Clasico at the end of the month. That is massive. That could be the nail in the coffin. 
if Valverde, and it seemed, you know, it seemed like a shock in the last few years to think the Barca could ever lose to Clasico because they've been so dominant over Real. Um, I really think that could be curtains for Valverde. And if Zidane wins it, that's massive. That is massive. On Hamez and Hazard regaining form, Hazard's first goal on assist at the weekend. Hamez Rodriguez getting on the score sheet. Bale got on the score sheet. I'm going to give mad props to Zidane. There's two players who <laughs> wanted to leave. The club came out and said they didn't want them. And he still managed to reintegrate them into the squad and prove that they're worthy players. They've got starting positions and now they're, they're doing the bits on the pitch. Props to Zidane, props to Bale and Hamas for getting their heads down and working on it, even though it looked like they didn't have a future. Hazard's going to come good. Benzema still doing his thing, massively underrated, still bagging goals. Yeah, I think things looking pretty good for Real Madrid. But as for this, well, that's all we've got time for in the video. Don't forget, guys, every Sunday night I'll be posting, asking for your topics from the weekend's football. Try not to leave too many Q&A questions, like the quick fires or who's going to win the Ballon d'Or. We'll save that stuff for myself and Paddy or Nico or Ian on Friday's Q&A. But as for the Monday topics, we're still working on a name for this show, but we will get one underway very, very soon. So thanks as always. Make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.